guys welcome to my channel my name is wolo if this is the first time you are seeing my videos i would say thank you and um, just click the subscribe button and just follow me you know yeah so don't mind me anyway um this week has been frustrating for me yeah it's been frustrating and a lot of negative things just happened this week i don't know i don't know whether it was planned i don't know how the universe just you know aligned that this week will be frustrating and also um, negative things like um, what's going on in South Africa, the killings and people leaving. And um, with me getting frustrated with something that has to do with the healthcare system in Canada, which I'm going to talk about. And um, this is for people who plan to come to Canada, either if you want to come as a student or a permanent resident. Is something you should be aware of it's not a hidden thing it's well known that the healthcare system in canada can be very frustrating because of the wait times so before i dive into this topic i will start from the very beginning and that is um, the healthcare coverage in different provinces in as much as healthcare is free in canada which is um covered by the provincial government each provincial government has its own system and has its own way of running um, the medical um, yeah the medical system in their province so as a newcomer to Canada depending on the on the province you land in if you land in Ontario you have to wait three months before you get your health card that's your OHIP I think that's what they call it Ontario health insurance plan or whatever I think that's what they call it if you land in Manitoba recently i discovered i just had to check the website to be sure of what i was going to talk about and discovered that if you land in manitoba you have to wait three months um, before you get the health card that means you have to apply when you arrive and then three months later you get your health card when i landed in 2016 it was not so we got our health card the next day and we were eligible for coverage immediately but in manitoba now you have to wait for like three months to get your health card and without your health card you are not eligible for um, the provincial um, health care or health care coverage in any form so if you want to see a medical doctor you can't see a medical doctor without your health card or you have to pay from your pocket and medical is very expensive um, in most of these um, developed countries or western world so um that's for manitoba and also i also discovered that um students who were eligible for healthcare coverage as at um, some years back are no longer eligible for healthcare coverage. So if you plan to come to study in Manitoba um, as a student, you are no longer eligible for healthcare coverage. You have to buy your own health insurance yourself. So this was effective September 2018. So if you come as a student, it means you have to you know, get a, a health insurance. <laughs> then um for alberta alberta doesn't specify if you're going to get healthcare coverage immediately but what is stated on their website is once you land you should apply for healthcare coverage within three months of arrival so it's not stated if um you're going to wait for like one month or two months before you get healthcare coverage or you're getting your healthcare coverage immediately they just say once you arrive apply within three months uh, that's what is on their website for Saskatchewan, once you arrive, you have to apply and then three months later, you now start getting coverage. So it's in, it's in the third month, just like Manitoba too. It's in the third month, you now get healthcare coverage. Nova Scotia, you get healthcare coverage um, the day you arrive. Once you apply, you get your health card. Um, coverage starts for you. Newfoundland and Labrador and New Brunswick, they did not properly define how long you will wait for you to get your healthcare coverage. Um, what I think is stated on their website is that you have to prove that you need to establish yourself in the province. Maybe you must have been a resident of the province for like three months or six months or, or thereabouts. So there is no proper definition of how long you will wait um, to be eligible to get healthcare coverage in Newfoundland and Labrador. For Prince Edward Island, I think it's three months. Yes, three months. Once you arrive, three months after you um, become eligible for healthcare coverage. I think all these provinces, they are kind of copying each other in terms of policies and all that. And um, for 
I didn't I didn't get to see any information for Nunavut, for Yukon, and for Northwest Territories. So anybody who has lived in those places, you are you are free to comment to tell us how long one has to wait to get healthcare coverage in um, either Nunavut, Northwest Territory, and um, Yukon. For British Columbia, I don't know if I've mentioned British Columbia before. British Columbia, it's the waiting time is two months once you arrive as a permanent resident. I think they, they have um, healthcare coverage for students. I'm not so sure. Uh, maybe I'll do a separate video for students and work permit holders to um, mention the provinces that cover um, healthcare for international students and um, work permit holders and their dependents. So that's it about um, getting healthcare coverage. And now the healthcare coverage doesn't cover everything. So it can cover some aspects of things and um, things like dental, it doesn't cover it. You need to get a private insurance or if wherever you're working, if, if your company has health insurance, those are the things that um, some of the companies cover for. So they kind of cover for um, the areas where the government is not providing healthcare, like dental, like uh, 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 vision care, where you have to pay out of your pocket. Some companies, you know, they have the, their own healthcare insurance that covers this aspect. Provincial governments do not cover for prescription drugs. So you have to buy your prescription drugs yourself and pay from your pocket. But if you have uh, a health insurance from your company or um, pharmacare, Pharmacare can take um, at least a portion of the coverage in terms of prescription drugs while you pay for your from your pocket for the other aspects. But if you're working in a company that covers prescription drugs, it means that you just show a card and your prescription drugs will be given to you for free. So that is healthcare in Canada. The frustrating thing about healthcare in Canada is that uh, the waiting times um, are not so good and based on my own personal experience I can say that the waiting times are really horrible and um, it's something that can cause if, if somebody has a small ailment and in the process of waiting to see a specialist the ailment can just you know multiply to something that is beyond control that is why it is really frustrating you know, compared to where we are coming from, where if you have your money, of course, healthcare is not free. If you have your money, you just go see a doctor. The doctor can uh, recommend that you run tests immediately to know what is wrong. And then from the test results, they are able to give you a prescription or they are able to recommend or refer you to another specialist that can see you within maybe one week or two weeks. But in Canada, it's a different ball game. So you're sick. And you go to meet your family doctor. Okay, let me, even, before I even talk about family doctor, um, once you arrive as an immigrant, it's very important that you search for a family doctor. Every province have a family doctor finder, um, uh, finder website where you just go put in your information and start looking for a family doctor. So that's very important. It's key that you look for a family doctor that will be there to refer you to specialists if you need one. So anybody coming to Canada as a permanent resident, put it at the back of your mind to search for a family doctor immediately you arrive so that you don't be among the people who do not have family doctors. And you do not know what might happen in the future. So it's very key that you look for a family doctor. So uh, back to me talking about the frustrations. Now, um, you are sick and you need to see a specialist. So you want to meet your family doctor. Your family doctor say, okay, um, they'll run some tests and if they look at the test and say, oh, the test needs a specialist attention, they'll refer your case to a specialist. And in referring your case to a specialist, you might spend like three to four months or five months or six months or one year waiting to see the specialist because there are very few specialists in Canada and the number of people waiting to see these specialists are so many. So there are so many patients waiting to see just one specialist. In most cases, you just find one specialist per case. So I'll give you an example. Let's say um, in the course of you discussing with your family doctor, your family doctor 
finds that you need to see a cardiologist you might find that in some provinces there is only one cardiologist or you might find that in some provinces there is only one i don't know which other specialist i'm going to call just one of them so that's the the frustration about um, the healthcare system and you now have to wait because there are so many people waiting to see just one specialist you will now join the queue of people waiting to see the specialist so waiting in, in in between the waiting period anything can happen to you and if anything happens to you you know it's really bad because the ailment can deteriorate you know we're supposed to seek immediate medical attention because you're waiting to see a specialist the ailment can deteriorate faster than you thought you know so that's why some people instead of waiting they just you know if they have the money they go to to where they can pay and um, get immediate attention get immediate treatment and then come back unfortunately once you if you cannot wait for to see a specialist in canada and you go out on your own to seek a medical um doctor outside of canada you will be the one to bear the cost the provincial government will not bear the cost but if you wait and at the end of the day you're able to see the specialist in Canada and the specialist cannot do anything in Canada, they, they have to refer you outside of Canada to uh, maybe the US, then the provincial government will bear the cost. But if you go on your own, you will be the one to bear the cost. Another frustrating thing is the testing. So when you're doing all these medical tests to diagnose what is wrong or to see what is actually wrong with a patient, there's also waiting time to be tested, which is quite frustrating. It's really frustrating that as big as Canada, um, for you to even get tested, let's say you want to do a CT scan or an MRI, you have to wait for as long as two months or three months to do a CT scan or an MRI. In emergency situations, especially, it's only, the, the only exceptions are for emergency situations. So for emergency situations, they can, you know, schedule you to do a CT scan and an MRI within one week. But if it is a non-emergency situation, you have to wait for two months, for three months, sometimes four months to even get tested. So these are the frustrating things and these are the frustrations one face in Canada in terms of medical care or healthcare coverage. And um, sometimes it is not funny because you need answers, but you are made to wait. You, you're just, you know, you, they keep telling you, um, well, unfortunately, we have only one specialist. Well, unfortunately, we have only one um, um, laboratory that can do the diagnosis. You know, it's so frustrating. And another thing is, um, there are so many immigrant medical doctors waiting to get their license. There are so many of them in Canada. But one thing I also discovered is, in as much as there are so many of them, the government... Um, put a cap on the number of people that gets a license per year. So it becomes highly competitive. Let's say we have 1,000 um, immigrant medical doctors. The government now says we have a cap. We can only take in 100 per year. So 900 of them will have to wait and now compete again for the following year. So it's only, let's say the government is saying, it's only 100 people we want to take per year. And you have 1,000 people competing for 100 spots. So that's the frustration of um, the healthcare system in Canada. And um, if for people who are blessed with health, you have to you know, glorify your maker that you are blessed with health. You don't have any issues. But for people who have one or two problems and need medical uh, intervention, it's really frustrating that the person will be made to wait because it is free. So that's the danger of having, um, at least when I say danger, I won't say danger. That's one of the disadvantage of having this free thing. Once it is free, the wait times are long. But when it is not free, um, you can just, if you have your money, just go and see a medical doctor. You are done and you come back. So this is the information I want to share. And... Um, in my subsequent videos, I think I want to be doing videos all the time. Instead of sitting down in one place and talking about something, 
I'll be just doing videos on the go to answer a lot of the frequently asked questions, both on the comment section and um, emails I receive. This week has been frustrating for me. So if I have not responded to your email, I'm sorry. I have experienced so much frustration this week. Um, but this is life and life has to go on. So um, I'll try as much as possible to just you know do videos on the go. If you want me to discuss a topic, just put it in the comment section. Tell me which topic you want me to research about and I'll research about them and talk about them um, with my videos on the go. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.